It's time for Paris Tiger Sports on the Paris Sports Network. Brought to you by Cornerstone Building Brands, Stuart and Carroll Funeral Home, Seed Solutions with Chip and Bethany Keys, Longview Bank and Trust, Moody Farms, State Farm Agent Terry Elliston, Align IFS, Savoya's Pizza, Edgar County Community Foundation, Country Financial Agents Jim Blue and Mark Gladding, Lake Ridge Christian Church, Ingram's Waste Disposal, The Skating Ring with CJ and Mary Jo Becker, North American Lighting, First Farmers Bank and Trust, Templeton Funeral Home, and White Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning. And our affiliate sponsors, Steve and Lynn Young, Mary Lou Pine Family, Paul and Kathy Porter, Winans Farms, Mark and Holly Winans, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, and Step Farms and Excavation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Paris High School. We have Paris Tiger Baseball on the air for you today. Hosting Arcola, Gabe Roush on the mound for the Tigers. The rest of the lineup, Lenny, who do we have out there today? All right, we got Ty King batting first, playing second. Sebastian Doherty's batting second, playing third. Ethan Curls, our DH, he's batting third for the pitcher, Gabe Roush. Like you said, he's on the hill today. Sean Dunn is batting fourth. He's over at first base. We got Carter Eastham still doing the catching. He'll be batting fifth. Nathan Trapp is out in left, batting sixth. Batting seventh is Kip Bradford. He'll be out in right. Shortstop is Parker Sanders. He'll be batting eighth. And batting ninth will be our center fielder, athlete of the week, Drew Rogers. That's right. Set that record in the high jump over six feet. I don't know how many inches it was after that, but uh, that's high. It, he did a good job. He can high jump his own height. That That's a pretty amazing. And for Arcola, all I've got is last names, so I'm not sure why the coaches always do that, but a lot of times that's all we get is last names. So leading off will be their pitcher, Thomas. He'll foul tip the first one. Except for the Phillips kids. We do yeah. have, we got a <laughs> I assumed they were twins, but maybe not. But a Brody and a Braden Phillips. Braden, okay. Now the Drakes, they don't get that luxury. They just get a B and an H on the subs there. Oh, okay. Don't know their first names. That one's inside and tight. He's throwing hard today. Yeah, he is. That's popped up. And nobody can field uh -uh. it. Nobody even had a clue, I don't think, where it was at. I don't think they did because nobody was really moving. Gabe was spinning in circles, but nobody else was. I know Carter flipped that mask off, and he was dancing around back here looking for it. I thought it might have been a foul ball the well, way Carter was moving. That's what I thought. And Sean Dunn came over from first. He's over this way looking for it. So we got a base runner on. Now that wind is howling today out of right field. It's coming hard out of the west. 21 mile an hour, my phone said. So, And I'm sure the gusts are higher than that. So, Judging by the, the trees out there in center field, that's a foul ball. Um, it's moving pretty hard. I was hoping to see some people sitting out there in those little pod things <laughs> because – the wind would probably blow them like a just, tumbleweed. Oh, yeah, yeah. About midway through the third, you just see them rolling towards the parking lot. It would be great. One ball, one strike. One on, and there's a foul back out of play. One and two. Be kind of like the kids that go to those parks and get in those big bubbles. Yeah. Chopped another foul. So We had one of those, similar to that, but th there was a hole in the middle, so it just blew up around you, and you were just supposed to go run into each other in these big bubbles. Uh, DJ and Maddie had them. Um, I have a feeling if I had had those as a kid, we would have gotten in trouble. <laughs> Probably. Another foul ball. 
This is their third baseman, number one, Wiseman. And like you said, he's definitely battling up there. I know this has been about the fourth or fifth pitch. And we lived on a hill. And down the hill was the creek in the pasture. Oh, boy. I guarantee yeah. you that ball. Somebody would have been in the somebody creek. Somebody had been rolling down that hill before we were done. I'd have signed up. One ball, two strikes. Pretty decent lead over at first. He's going. The throw down to second is not in time. We got a stolen base. He had a great jump there. He did. Well, he'd been going, trying to go ever since about the second pitch, but Wiseman kept fouling him off, and he fouls that one off. Bradford gives a run, but he gives up on it when he runs into the fence. That's a good time to give up. It's a good indicator. You're out of room. Here's another 2-2 two -two pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Just past Sanders. And that's runs, an RBI. Yep, run's going to score. Parker made a good effort. That was way back in the hole there at second base. But the runner was going on contact. And he had no problem getting in. Definitely, because he seen the, he seen the hit and was pretty sure it was going, going to go through. Even if Sanders had knocked it down. He wasn't going to get him at third. There's a high fly ball out to right. Bradford's under it, but he's clear back to the warning track. But he keeps the runner from going to second. So You can tell, like, the way he kind of he gets underneath it. And at the last second, he reaches up with that left arm. And you can tell the wind's really playing with him out there yeah. because he, he camped underneath it, and then it was a lot farther and faster than he anticipated there with that last second lunge. But he makes the catch. We get the out. Runner's still at first with one away. And he's going, and that's a hit in the left center. Yeah, that's probably going all the way to the wall. Cut off by Rogers. They're going to send the runner, and... It's a two-run game. So that's going to be a stand-up double for Helmuth. And he gets an RBI. Well, the Tigers are going to have to have their hit and shoes on today, it looks like. Our Cole has come out swinging. This will be Braden Phillips, their center fielder, stepping in. Uh, it also tells me that Gabe's throwing strikes. It's hard to do that with pitches out of the zone. A 1-1 one, one count. So he's obviously around the plate. That Except one, with that one. Yeah, I was going to say that one skips low in the dirt. Jinxed him. Two balls, one strike. Swing and a miss there. Blew that one by him, two and two. That definitely has some serious heat on it. And there's a shot out into the gap that's going to get down, and that's probably going all the way to the yep. fence. That's a triple there. He's oh, coming there. home. Throws off the mark. That's inside the park. Four well, nothing. Well, do you give him an inside the park homer, or do you, do you give him a triple and an error on the throw? Because the, the cutoff throw went clear back to, I'm not sure what Bradford was doing, but. I think you give him a triple, and he, admit, that's he, what he I'm comes thinking. home he on comes the throw. He comes on the throw. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know if you give anybody an error, but, yeah, he. But I assumed he was going to be stopping at third. I think everybody did. I 
I ain't to do inside the park. You got to have the gas on the whole time. There's a cold strike. This will be number 15, Brody Phillips. He'll be their shortstop. So four of the first five guys have scored. Ground ball to Parker. Side arms it over to first for the out. Two down. Two down and nobody on. Well, there's a questionable cutoff throw. It hasn't been the defense that's been the problem. They've just been gapping the ball yeah. every time. Every hit's been in a hole. This is number six, Alanis. Swing and a miss there, 0 and 2. He's playing second base for them today. And he drives that one foul. Clear down the right field corner, out of play. That'll keep the count 0 and 2. Got him with some high heat there. That'll end the inning, but the damage is done. Our Cola 4, Paris 0. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Paris Sports Network. Farm Credit Illinois is a proud supporter of the Paris Tigers athletes and the surrounding farm families. Farm Credit blocks appraisal costs and lender fees and defends our borrowing members with free repricings as the market allows. Farm Credit helps farmers score with annual cash patronage. Team up with a cooperative helping farm families succeed and let us help lead your agricultural business to victory. Best of luck, Tigers, this sporting season. Cornerstone Building Brands is the largest manufacturer of exterior building products in North America, servicing commercial, residential, and repair and remodel markets. They're the number one manufacturer of vinyl siding, windows, and metal accessories, as well as North America's top choice in metal roofing and wall systems. With an expansive product offering and more than 100 locations, they're committed to providing high quality exterior building solutions that their customers and communities can count on. That's Cornerstone Building Brands in Paris. It's the bottom of the first inning, the Tigers down four nothing. Gonna be leading it off with Ty King, Sebastian Doherty, and Ethan Curl. Hopefully the Tigers got the bats hot today because it looks like it's going to be a slugfest. Either that or it's going to be a 10-run rule, one or the other. Arcola came out swinging, putting everything. Other than the one ground ball kind of scooted through under Parker's glove, everything else was a shot into the gap. Well, even that ground ball around. was hit hard, though. It I was. Mean, it was a shot right back up the middle, and... Sanders just lacked about an inch of getting a glove on it. So we'll see what the Tigers can do, though, now that they're up to bat. This will be Ty King stepping in, playing second base today. Chopper right back to the pitcher. Underhands at the first for out, number one. These uh, batting helmets the Tigers have this year kind of remind me of the old uh, Orioles. Yeah, they do. They look a lot like that, yeah. Stuff from the, the 80s they had there. Black helmets with the orange bill and the white front with the logo on it. Yeah, I like it, They though. just don't have a goofy bird. All shiny and new looking. There's a strike. Owen won the count. One away for Doherty. Call strike two right there on the corner. Well, Thomas is not messing around out there. No, he's not. He's bringing it. Who? Swing and a miss, and Doherty's down. Two up, two down. This will bring up our DH, Ethan Curl. Ethan swing. takes a healthy cut at that one and misses. Comes up empty.
Same thing. Oh, and two. Pops this one up foul. Back out of play. Count stays 0 and 2. He worked quickly on the mound, too. He's not taking any time between pitches. It's fine with me. Absolutely. Move this along. Whoa! That made me flinch. It did. Good thing that fence and these windows are here. You might have been wearing that well, one, Lenny. I might have been. Curveball oh, for a man. strike. Called strike three. Tigers go down in order. That'll end the inning. We'll come back with the top of the second. Arcola four, Paris zero on the Paris Sports Network. With two convenient locations in Paris and Kansas, Templeton Funeral Home is always there providing the care and service you and your loved ones deserve. Pete, Mark, and the staff at Templeton Funeral Home would like to wish all the Tigers the best of luck this season. Go Tigers! North American Lighting is the leading supplier of automotive lighting systems in North America, and they're proud supporters of Paris Tiger Athletics. They'd like to wish all the Tigers the best of luck this sporting season. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home is dedicated to providing compassionate and individual attention to every family they serve, sincerely caring for your family's needs. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home proudly supports Paris Tiger Athletics. Our Cole is going to take another crack at it here in the top of the second inning. They're clear down to the bottom of the lineup. This will be Lewis, their left fielder, stepping in. It'll be Lewis, Stevens, and then back to the top. There's a strike, one and one count. Chops that one foul. Bring the count to one and two. Send him packing. One down. That's a good start. That'll bring up number two. That's uh, Stevens. Yep. The right fielder. He, that's what I got in my book anyway. So takes that one up high and away for a ball, or high and in. I mean, excuse me, my bad. There's a cold strike. Another one. Swing and a miss. One and two. When the backstop is bouncing around, you know the wind's blowing hard. Out of the zone, two and two. Yeah, because it's just chain link fence. I mean, there's nothing really to catch the wind except those probably four inch poles. And But it it's rocking back and forth probably three inches or so. Two, two pitch. Just missed. Three and two, full count. Pull that one foul. Swing and a miss. 
Out number two. Now we're back to the top of the lineup with the pitcher, Thomas. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the inning off. Roush is rolling here in the second. That's three strikeouts in a row, actually, if you go back to the last batter of the last That's inning. That's right. He ended the inning on a strike. Starts him out up high with a ball. Now see if he comes down and away right there on that corner for a cold strike. No, nope, still. Oh. Well, Carter set up low and away, or at least away. I think that one just got away from Gabe a little bit. 2-0. and oh. That thing has smoked foul down the third base side. Oh, it, no, it's fair. That's a home run. Wow. I honestly have no idea where that landed. It was tagged, but I was like, you like, I lost it up there in the sky, and then I thought, well, it's surely foul, but the wind's out of the west, so it probably kept drifting it back. Our call up, 5 nothing. Inside for a ball. 1-0. and This will be third baseman Wiseman. Swing and a miss at that one. We're all already got some guys heading down to the bullpen here. Well, that we do, yeah. Ground ball chopped foul. One ball, two strikes. Nobody on with two out. Well, now change of heart, I guess. We're okay. coming back. Change their mind, not warming up after all. Two and two, the count. Big slow curve, and he smokes it for a single out in the center. Rogers gets it in quickly. Runner on first now with two away. Tell you the top of the order for this Arcola team is tough. Well, the first two batters have three singles and a homer. Pretty good ratio. It is. Other than this, uh, this guy here flew out. Everybody else got hits, too, for a while. So, And he drove it deep to right. Yes, he did. In fact, Bradford's back there on the warning track now, it appears. This is our catcher, Griffith. Cold strike, throw down to first, but he dives back in safe. One ball, one strike. He was flinching at the pitcher, trying to distract him a little bit. So Easton thought he'd help him out. Fire one down there. Two and one the count. Skips that one in. That'll make it three and one. I think last time up, Griffiths hit that first pitch deep out to right. Runner's going. He Drive. drives this one deep to left. Left center, everybody's on their horse, and it hits the warning track. Another run in on a stand-up double. Tell you, the Arcola fans brought the noise with them today. They did. Really getting behind their team down there. Six nothing score now. Yeah, I noticed this one guy sitting right down here below us, kind of over to our right. 
he had a little wagon with him. He had like four bottles of water, a box of Nilla wafers. He had the blankets. He had all kinds of stuff in that little wagon with him. Came to the long haul. He was prepared. That pitch is high for a ball. Want to know the count? Out of the zone, 2-0. Oh. Outside, three balls, no strikes. This is their first baseman, Helmuth. He doubled last time up, drove in a run. Takes that one for a cold strike. Bring the count to three and one. Walked him. Remember Roush's first walk today? Yeah, it is. Puts runners at first and second with two away. This will bring up Braden Phillips, their center fielder. He tripled last time up and came on in to score on the relay throw. Starts him off with a curveball up high. Ground ball to second. Backhanded, throw to first for out number three. Arcola chips in two more. They lead 6 nothing going into the bottom of the second. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Paris Sports Network. Moody Farms of Paris is a proud supporter of Paris Tiger student-athletes. Whether they're on the court, in the field, or in the classroom, Moody Farms wants to wish all of our Tigers the best of luck this year. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. We are many, we are one. You have so much to give. Continuing what we've begun. Helping our families to truly live. I will, you will, together we will show some heart, do our part, take a compassionate stand for good forever. For Edgar County, ECCF. Edgar County Community Foundation. Welcome back. Bottom of the second inning. Tigers down by six already. And we've only gone through three batters. <laughs> yeah. Well, this will bring up our first baseman, Sean Dunn. Then it'll be catcher Carter Eastham, and then left fielder Nathan Trapp. So, a little rough start at the beginning. Hopefully, we can uh, get something going here in the bottom of the second. Well, the wind should be favorable for Sean if he that can. It should if he can turn on something. The right fielder's not really very deep either. Cold strike. Down on that inside corner. Missed on that one, one and one. Foul tip, one and two.
Takes that one outside and wide for a ball. Even things up at two and two. Tell you, Sean's got more patience than I do. Mm. I'd have hacked at that and struck out. Fouls that one away, keeps it count at two and two. That one's out wide. Full count. At least Sean's making him work a little. Yeah. And he walks. All right. Base runner on for the Tigers here in the bottom of the second. Our first base runner of the day. That'll bring up our catcher, Carter Eastham. Carter takes a big healthy cut and misses. Strike one. He's a little behind him. He's still behind him, but he fouled that one off way over by the tennis courts. So he's behind in the count now. 0 oh and 2. Be a good spot for a change up here. Already behind you twice. You know you're going to yeah. jump out on this one a little bit. Breaking there it ball. Is. Big curve. Slow breaking curve and strikes him out. It wasn't a change up, but he still changed the speeds on him enough yeah. to really fool him. One down. Left fielder, number seven, Nathan Trapp. Pickoff move back to first. I'm not sure Sean's stealing. No, nah, I wouldn't think. Probably pretty sure that Wally and Judy's listening today. They oh, most definitely. Called strike, 0 and 1. Pops it up, foul. Just does miss a Tiger dugout. Lands in front, so. No balls, two strikes. And we've got 14 watching today, it says, so. All right. Nathan's behind in the count. No balls, two strikes. Dunn still on down at first. There's that slow breaking curveball again, and it fooled Nathan. He goes down swinging. Two down. That's why it's important to hit the like and subscribe buttons on YouTube so you know when we do one of these Saturday games. You know, it's not your typical afternoon game. Sometimes the start time changes a little bit. These are right. 10 o'clock starts. You need a reminder. Exactly. Bradford takes that first pitch down low. No, it was going to the corner for a cold strike, I guess. Ooh, up Swing in the eye. Swing miss at that one. Oh, and two. Jacks is swing there on one out of the zone. Kip usually makes pretty solid contact. No. Not this time, though. He goes down swinging, so Sean draws the walk, but the next three all go down swinging. That's the end of two. The Tigers down 6 nothing. We'll be back with the top of the third right after this on the Paris Sports Network. At First Farmers, we are committed to the communities we serve. For us, joining a community means more than just opening shop. We want to see businesses thrive, generational farms succeed, and local families continue to put down roots and grow. 
Whether you're looking for a farm loan, managing a business, building a nest egg for a new home, or searching for the personal financial tools that will set you up for financial success, we've got you covered. At First Farmers Bank and Trust in Paris. The skating rink at Twin Lakes, formerly known as Twin Lakes Roller Rink, has been a popular establishment in Paris for over 60 years. New owners CJ and Mary Jo Becker are bringing new life to the skating rink with arcade games, a snack bar, TV hangout area for teens, and lots of roller skating. Stop by 1250 North Main Street in Paris on Friday and Saturday nights from 6 to 10, with a fifth quarter on Friday nights until midnight, and on Sundays from 2 to 4. Follow them on Facebook for more upcoming events. Family owned in Paris for 38 years, Savoia's Pizza is the place for real Italian food. Be sure to try their famous pizza nuggets and follow them on Facebook for their latest specials. Stop by 327 North Main Street for carryout or call 217-463-2500 for delivery. It's the top of the third inning. Ball one way inside on that one. This will be Brody Phillips, number 15, their shortstop. That one off the mark as well. Two balls, no strikes. And there's a drive out into left. Trap gets over and picks it up on one hop, but it's going to be a leadoff single for Phillips. This is the only part of the order here that's struggled at all against the Tigers today, so hopefully that'll continue here. That's seven, eight, nine hitters. Toss over to first to get Phillips back there close. This will bring up the second baseman, Alanis. Lays down a perfect sacrifice bunt. Moves the runner down to second base. What a way. Got to have those role players that know what their role is and execute. There's a big healthy cut, swing and a miss. To that was way up in his eyes. Lewis, their left fielder. He struck out last time up. Called strike on the inside half. All right, Gabe ahead in the count here, 0 and 2. Got him. All right, two down. Runner stays at second now for Stevens. I thought there for a second Carter was going to zip that one down to third on the strikeout. I like to dance off a second base out there and make you think they're going. This will bring up their number nine hitter, their right fielder, Stevens. Turn and throw back to second. Oh, and it almost gets by King, but luckily he knocks it down. There was nobody there covering the bag, so he's trying to hit King on his way to second. Then <laughs> Ty loses his hat. Wind almost blew it out to center field. Cold strike. One ball, one strike. Two down, the runner on second. He's going He's down going. to third. There's a throw. And it's not in time. Stolen base. And a 2-1 count for Stevens with a runner on third. Swing and a miss. He even things up at two and two. Steven struck out his last time at bat. 
We could use another one right now. Most definitely. Not like that. No, nope, not on that one. Full count. No, well, that's where it was last time when he struck out. Cold strike that time. Got him looking. That ends the top half. Bottom of the third coming up. Arcola 6, Paris 0 here on the Paris Sports Network. White Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning have been your hometown boys for over 50 years, offering 23 and a half hour service. That's right, they need a half hour for coffee. Call John at 217-465-3195. Country Financial representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student-athletes. Give them a call at 465-8320 or stop by their office at 802 North Main Street in Paris. Make plans to attend Lake Ridge Christian Church this Sunday, either for their traditional service at 8 a.m. or their contemporary service at 10.30 a.m. There's something for everyone at Lake Ridge, from infants to the more seasoned generation. Visit their website at lakeridgechurch.org or find them on Facebook to watch their service each Sunday morning at 1030. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. Welcome back, bottom of the third inning. We're down at the bottom of the order. Eight hitter, Parker Sanders, our shortstop, is going to step in as soon as the umpire gets fitted up and gets ready. That one went right through the catcher's mitt or off the end or something. Anyway, he didn't make the catch, so. Ball one. Parker was in his stance and ready to go before the umpire and the catcher were even set. He's ready. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Got way ahead oh, of that one. Oh, man, just, just foul. Just foul. Doggone it. Not even a full swing. He just kind of poked it out there down the right field line. He'd have been able to run for a while if it had stayed fair. Well, it didn't land foul by much. Mm -mm. That one's up high for a ball. Evens things up at two and two. Slaps that one off foul again. Keeps it at two and two. Called oh. strike on that big sweeping curve. That's kind of been his go-to pitch with two strikes. Yep. That's out number one. He sets you up with that heater, and you're fouling everything off to the weak side. And then he comes in there at that slow sweeping curve, and just nobody's got an answer for that yet. First pitch for a ball, 1-0 count now to Rodgers. Swing and a miss, one and one. Another swing and a miss. One and two. Cold strike right there on the corner. Two up, two down. 
Take us back to the top of the order now with Ty King. Well, he struck out seven of our nine hitters. He's on a roll today. Called strike to King. Seven out of the first nine were strikeouts. Yep. Wow. King led things off with the ground out back to him, and then he walked done. There's a swing and a miss at that sweeping curve. So ties behind now. No balls, two strikes. Cold strike three. Got him looking at that curve again. That's the end of the third. Arcola six, Paris nothing. Top of the fourth right after this on the Paris Sports Network. If you're looking for agricultural, business, or personal loans, Longview Bank & Trust has you covered. They can even help you with investment options and online banking. With locations in Paris, Crispin, Georgetown, and Marshall, they're always ready with the services you need. Look them up online at longviewbt.com. The Paris Sports Network would like to give a big thank you to our affiliate sponsors for their support of Paris Tiger Athletics. The Mary Lou Pine family, Paul and Kathy Porter, Mark and Holly at Winans Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, and Steve and Lynn Young. It's the bottom of the third inning. I'm sorry, the top of the fourth inning. Been going through this pretty quick today. And we've got a new pitcher on the mound for the Tigers. That'll be number 19, Braden Rogers. Adeline Gabe's day. Gabe had a rough go of it out there. He was around the strike zone. Was he wasn't he walking a bunch he, of guys. Yeah, he didn't. I think he only had one walk. Struck out, what, four or five? He struck out five guys yeah, in, two, in four, three innings. Yeah. So, but he was throwing strikes, and they were just hitting it, and they were hitting it hard. Yeah. It was not his day there. Hopefully and, a little change of um, delivery speed, something here from Braden will slow him down. He did get a, a big goose egg for him there in the third. He, they jumped out big on him. He gave up four runs in the first inning, uh, two in the second. That one big home run there in the second inning. And then shut him out in the third. So he was getting better. But now we're right back to the top of the lineup again with Thomas, Wiseman, and Griffith. This is where they've done all their damage, so we'll see how Braden counters this. Looks like uh, Jackson Rigdon has moved over to second base. I see 21 out there. Starts him ball. out with a curve. So. Parker is still short, so Ty didn't move over there. So Ty's just not out there at the moment. Defensively, may re-enter. Well, somebody's out in right field. That's not Bradford. No, it's not. Out of the zone, two and one the count. Numbers are too little on the front of the jerseys to see at that say, distance. Did Ty maybe go to left and Nathan move from left to right, maybe? There's a swing and a miss. Good looking pitch there, two and two count. I'm going to bring binoculars one of these days. <laughs> I said that last time and didn't. Yeah, yeah. 
Fitting in, I, I could have borrowed his little blue ones. Ground ball to second, scooped up by Rigdon. Throw to first in time for out number one. All right, Rogers does all right on the first one. One up, one down. This will bring up number one, third baseman Wiseman. All he's done is two singles and scored two runs. And Hard he rips shot. that one in the hole past everybody. Out to left. So he's three for three today, all three singles. Left field is Maddox Hutchings right now. Okay. I saw the four when he turned around. I could read the back of the jersey. Okay. So Maddox went to left, and maybe Nathan moved over to right. I don't know. There's another shot out the left. That's going to be another single. Runners at first and second now. Could be tie out and left too, as far as I know. Or out and right, I mean. I just know it's not Bradford. No. All right, the number four hitter, first baseman, Helmuth steps in. He's had a stand-up double and a run and a walk. Looks at a strike on the first pitch, 0-1 count. Two on and one away. Another hard ground ball to third. Steps on third, throw to first. There for the there double play. There we go, double play. I like it. Good defense down there at third by Doherty. Turns two, and we're out of the inning. Arcola gets two on, but they strand them both. They lead 6 nothing at the end of three and a half. We'll be back in just a moment here on the Paris Sports Network. Cornerstone Building Brands is the largest manufacturer of exterior building products in North America, servicing commercial, residential, and repair and remodel markets. They're the number one manufacturer of vinyl siding, windows, and metal accessories, as well as North America's top choice in metal roofing and wall systems. With an expansive product offering and more than 100 locations, they're committed to providing high quality exterior building solutions that their customers and communities can count on. That's Cornerstone Building Brands in Paris. With two convenient locations in Paris and Kansas, Templeton Funeral Home is always there providing the care and service you and your loved ones deserve. Pete, Mark, and the staff at Templeton Funeral Home would like to wish all the Tigers the best of luck this season. Go Tigers! North American Lighting is a leading supplier of automotive lighting systems in North America, and they're proud supporters of Paris Tiger Athletics. They'd like to wish all the Tigers the best of luck this sporting season. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. It's the bottom of the fourth inning. The Tigers still looking to get on the board, trailing 6-0 to Arcola. And we're going to see if we can do that with Sebastian Doherty. Swing and a miss, strike one. A lot of times you'll see a guy make a great play in the field and bring that momentum to the plate the next time up. So That's what we're hoping for. Watch the strike there, 0-2 count. Oh, chased him on that big breaking ball. One down. DH, number five, 
Ethan Curl stepping in. Cool. He's still one of the better breaking balls we've seen this year. And this guy can bring it now. Go, oh, hit God, him. Hit him, hit by pitch. So that puts a runner on. And it'll bring up Sean Dunn. Sean walked his last time up, but that's where he ended up at was first base. Strike on the first pitch, a one count. Been jumping ahead of all the batters today, too. Yeah, he has. Ethan gets a relatively short lead down at first. Outside for a ball, one and one. Pickoff move back to first, not in time. This is outside again, two and one. Outside again, three and one. There's there a go. shot in the gap. That might be a double. Well, Curl stops at second. So. All right. Tigers get their first hit of the game here in the bottom of the fourth. Two on, one away. Going to have a courtesy runner for Dunn down at first. They'll be bringing Brinkley in. I'll be sending them all up about left-handed at this point. <laughs> Carter steps in. Yeah, that big slow breaking curve doesn't work against left-hander quite so well. Not as well, no. He, he had a hard time throwing strikes to Dunn. There's another Ooh. shot in the gap. That'll bring a run in. All the way to the fence. That's going to bring two in. They're going to score Brinkley all the way from first. Two RBI double for Easton. Tigers are on the board now, six to two. Still just one away. Ethan had a lead out there. He had to step back to second to get out of the way of that one, and then he kind of looked like Fred Flintstone there for a second to get those feet going again to head back to third. Brinkley was running behind him the whole way, so he scores all the way from first. The lead now cut to four, six to two. Strike on the first pitch. Nathan Trapp up there now. Well, Nathan's still in the game then, so I'm assuming maybe he went to right. It looked like single digit out there on the jersey. I didn't. I wasn't bright enough to watch when they came off the field, you know, to <laughs> check that. But it's not like pro ball here. I mean, you can leave a game and re-enter a game, right, and there's right. some. There's all kinds of. Oh man, there's that slow curve ball for strike curve three ball again. That's two. This inning. This will be number four. Maddox, Maddox Hutchings. Yep. 
batting in the seventh spot in place of Bradford. So War Trap still hitting? Yeah, I'd say you're right. I think Trap went over to right and Hutchings came in for Bradford. Fakes the pickoff move to second to get Easton back. Well, it's not like Carter's going to be a threat to steal, I wouldn't think. Not regularly. How often does he get to run for himself anyways? Not too often. I can't normally, say I've seen him on the base path this year. Normally, by being the catcher, they, they put the pinch runner in for him. Outside. Two balls, no strikes. A pie. That's a pie. Three and oh. Changes his pitching style a little bit when you got runners on. Yep. There he brings the strike, three and one. Swing and a miss. He's worked it back to full now. I think he intended that one to go a long way somewhere. <laughs> He's swinging hard. Two away, here's the 3-2 pitch. And looking at the curve. Yep. It's been a popular theme today. Kind of like the Clint Eastwood movie, Trouble with the Curve. Now we're having and trouble we, with the curve today. We definitely are. Top of the fifth coming up in a moment. Tigers down four here on the Paris Sports Network. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home is dedicated to providing compassionate and individual attention to every family they serve, sincerely caring for your family's needs. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home proudly supports Paris Tiger Athletics. Moody Farms of Paris is a proud supporter of Paris Tiger student athletes. Whether they're on the court, in the field, or in the classroom, Moody Farms wants to wish all of our Tigers the best of luck this year. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. It's the bottom of the fifth inning. The Tigers down 6-2. to two. Carter now making his way back out. Took him a little while to get dressed. He was out there on second base. Braden Rogers still on the mound for the Tigers. Shout out to our sponsors out there on the scoreboard, Lenny. We've got the Ingram's Waste, Diamond Brothers Insurance, and the Eagle Ridge Golf Course. The sun had done its damage to our uh, sponsor list out there and pretty much just faded it away, and they've redone the scoreboards on both diamonds. So we thank them for supporting Paris Athletics. All right. This should be number 10. Braden Phillips stepping in, and he fouls that first one off. He had a stand-up double in the first, grounded out to second and in, in the second. Swing and a miss there, 0-2. Now 
That one's up high for a ball. Bring the count to one and two. Just misses outside there. Two and two. Base it. It's going to roll out there to center field. And there's a runner on first with nobody out. Arcola definitely put their hitting shoes on today before they came over. So. Yes, they did. At least the top half of the order anyway. This should be hit. I'm assuming it's his brother, Brody Phillips. He's their shortstop. He fouls the first pitch off out of play. No balls, one strike. Runners going, and Carter bobbles yeah. it for a second. Had a little trouble getting it out of the glove. So Braden's down at second now. Good that block was, there by yeah, Carter. That was a down low and away. There's a one two pitch. Skips in the dirt low again, and Carter blocks this one, but. Runner still gets down to third. Phillips, yep, still trots into third. So now we've got a runner at third, nobody out. Two two count on Brody Phillips. Top of the fifth now. We can't afford to be trading runs with him from here out. We've got to stop him. I guess I'm catching up to do. Pulled that one foul hard. Coach tries to barehand it down there and well, at least came up knocked, a little short. He at least knocked it down though and slowed it down. Didn't so. embarrass himself. Outside. Counts full. And he walks, walks him. him. Runners at the corners with nobody out. This should be Alanis. Alanis, their second baseman. Well, that could be an O on the. I just guessed when I was writing it in. Yeah, kind of his A's are all capital A's. So I would say it's an O, like Brody. Okay, well. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I'll honest. We'll go with that. I got to put on my teacher hat and decipher the handwriting. There you go. Well, the runner chugs down to second. So now we got runners at second, third. Nobody out. Alonis is digging in now with. Did take that first pitch for a strike, though. So. Swing and miss that one. So he's behind in the count now. No balls, two strikes. He st struck out yeah, his first time first up, time I remember. Up and then laid down the sack bunt last time up. 
Couldn't just, get it. Just missed inside. One two pitch here coming from Rogers. And it's going to be fouled on the first base side. Mm. Now, the first base coach, yeah. he, he did it. His ball wasn't going as fast. No. And he got in front of it, got down on one knee, so he was going to block it for sure. Another one fouled out. Over towards the dugout this time. Still one ball, two strikes, nobody out. Runners second and third. That one skips in the dirt, gets by Carter just a little bit, but nobody's moving, so. Out of create a 2-2 two -two count. Ground ball to short and booted. Took a high hop yeah, and did. got him in the chest. He Kept knocked, it in front of him, yeah, knocked it down anyways. Knocked it down, but the damage is still done. The run scores. The runner on second moves over to third. So now Alonis is on at first, and I'm guessing he'll take second on the first or second pitch. Swing and a miss, throw down to third, went over Doherty's head, but nobody's able to advance other than the guy on first taking second. Okay, this step won't show up in the score, but hats off there to Parker Sanders at short, knowing to back up at third. He's in position. Mm -hmm. It's an errant throw. He scoops it up. No harm done. Those little things like that over the course of a season come back to haunt you if you don't do them right. Yep. That was outside. outside and wide. Fouls that one off over. That's going to make the tennis court, I believe. This will be Lewis, their left fielder, stepping in. Now he's got a one ball, two strike count. And two on with the runners at second and third. Check swing. Going to dribble over to second. Out at first, but another runs in. Arcola up eight to two. So you actually call that a sacrifice or? Nah. Nah. Just four to three, but the run does score. That was just a, I didn't mean it swing. Way exactly, but but he got the job done anyway. Nonetheless, yep. he still got the run in. Both runners, like you said, one scored and one advanced to third. So this will bring up the number nine hitter, Stevens. Look out! That's way high and away. He's their right fielder. That's out of the zone, two and no count. Cold hey. strike. Two balls, one strike. That's outside and wide. 
Had good movement off it, on it, just off the mark, and now he's uh, got a hitter's count here at three and one. You don't want to put another guy on for the top of the order coming up. Definitely not. Swing and a miss at that one, so. Now the count's full. Still just got the one out. Runner still on down at third. Oh, got him. He thought he had a free pass. Two down. Now we're back to the top lineup with Thomas. All he's done is singled and homered and grounded out to second. Scored two runs. Look at that umpire's pants out there. That wind is pretty <laughs> stiff. Yeah, it is. They're just flapping in the breeze. Low and away, ball one. Have you seen all the hoopla over the uh, MLB's uniforms this year? No, I don't guess so. Uh, they've changed styles or manufacturers or something. There's a big to-do over them. Ground ball oh, through the gap it, there, it right gets down past the line. Doherty down the line at third, so another run scores, and he's going to be in a second with a stand-up double. Nine to two, Arcola up. Still two down. And they're still threatening, though, with the runner on at second. Yeah, it's bad enough they've gone to really small names on the back of the jerseys or something. They've changed their styles, but uh, I guess the material's really thin. Really? And the guys are, like, just sweating through them. Huh. It hasn't been pretty so far. And it's not even hot yet. No. No, it's going to get much worse. One ball, no strikes. This is Wiseman, their third baseman. He's three for three today, scored two runs. Inside for a ball, two and no count. Well, I'm sure back in the old days when they wore the old wool uniforms, nobody liked those, but. You get that wool damp though, it'll keep you cool. Look out. Just about got him. That's three, you know. Looks like we got another. Ty King is going down to the bullpen now, maybe. That one skips away. Run our heads down to third. So now we got runners on the corners. Still got the two outs. This will bring up the catcher, Griffith, their number three hitter. He flew out the deep left. He's first time up, stand up double, second time up, and he singled the third time up. All the infielders go in and give Rogers a little pep talk. Say, hey, come on, bub, just throw strikes. We got two outs. Just let them hit it. Let our defense work for you. We'll back you up. I'm sure they're trying to assure him. Out of the zone for a ball. Steps off, checks the runner at first. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't go down to second on that first pitch. That's usually been kind of the MO today so far. There he goes. And, and there's, there's a shot a through the hole between third and short. Throw it at 
third. Not in time. Let's a runner go to second, but it's a single. And another run scores. Now this next run's critical, and we're in the fifth. It's 11 to two, one more run, and we're in trouble here. Well, they got guys on second and third. There are two outs, but this brings up their number four hitter, Helmuth. He had a stand-up double in the first. He walked in the second, grounded out to third, unassisted double play in the fourth. And now he comes up in the fifth. So, like you said, this is a critical spot. So Coach Tarr knows that as well. He calls time, goes out and talks to his pitcher and the defense. And see if we can get out of this inning without giving up that crucial. Looks like Ty's done warming up. Braden stepping off and Ty's going to come in now and see if he can get us out of a jam here in the top of the fifth. Well, he'll take his five or six warm-up pitches. So. I think Jackson trotting off as well. Not sure what that'll mean yet. We currently don't have anybody on the field to play second. Somebody's got to come out. All right. That Roush coming back out? Looks like it. 30, yeah, 33. 33. That's Gabe Roush. So Gabe's going to go play second? Yep. Gabe's played a lot of short for us this year. I think, anyway. I haven't done a whole lot of boys games this year. Well, we try to bounce back and forth between the boys and the girls, and sometimes we get caught up doing a few boys games in a row or a few girls games in a row. Or, or they go on the road for a week, and we don't do any games. That so. is true. All right. Anyway, Ty King's back in the ball game, and he's doing the pitching now. So, and he'll have helmet up at the plate with runners at second and third, but we do have two outs. So, I think the home plate umpire though is still filling out his scorecard. Now nah, he's ready. That one skips low in the dirt for a ball. Good block by Easton to keep it in play. Not this oh, time. Gets away. Runner slides in at home, and that's 12 to 2. That's the 10 run rule there. That puts a lot of pressure on the offense here in the bottom half. I've only got 11. Nope, I hit the button twice. You're right, it's 11. But the runner's still on down a third. Yes. So it could be 12 before this inning's over. There's a big breaking curve for a strike. 
Yeah, that's just me tapping on the mouse. Hit that score one too many times. It's easy to do. There's a shot to sh second. Roush comes up with it, and that stops it. All right, that keeps us away from that 10-run rule. 11-2 the score, though. We gave up a bunch. We'll be back with the bottom half of the inning right after this on the Paris Sports Network. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. We are many, we are one. You have so much to give. Continuing what we've begun. Helping our families to truly live. I will, you will, together we will show some heart. Do our part. Take a compassionate stand for good forever for Edgar County ECCF Edgar County Community Foundation. At First Farmers, we are committed to the communities we serve. For us, joining a community means more than just opening shop. We want to see businesses thrive, generational farms succeed and local families continue to put down roots and grow. Whether you're looking for a farm loan, managing a business, building a nest egg for a new home, or searching for the personal financial tools that will set you up for financial success, we've got you covered. At First Farmers Bank and Trust in Paris. The skating rink at Twin Lakes, formerly known as Twin Lakes Roller Rink, has been a popular establishment in Paris for over 60 years. New owners CJ and Mary Jo Becker are bringing new life to the skating rink with arcade games, a snack bar, TV hangout area for teens, and lots of roller skating. Stop by 1250 North Main Street in Paris on Friday and Saturday nights from 6 to 10 with a fifth quarter on Friday nights until midnight and on Sundays from 2 to 4. Follow them on Facebook for more upcoming events. Parker Sanders steps in here in the bottom of the fifth. Takes a strike on the first pitch. And he's still bringing some heat. Thomas still out there on the hill for the Purple Riders. Ground ball to second. Fielded cleanly, the toss to first, and Sanders is out. And, uh, they're saying that Thomas is committed to Louisville. We heard earlier. Probably the better pitcher that they'll face this season. Yeah. This will bring up the number nine hitter, Drew Rogers. Cold strike right there on the corner. Well, he struck out 11 so far this game. Well, he slowed down because he had that in inning and a half, it seemed like. <laughs> it seemed that way. but Missed there just a little bit, one and two. Well, he struck out two in the first, three in the second, three in the third, and three in the fourth. And he strikes out Rogers. Now we're back to the top of the lineup, and Ty King steps back in, who's out actually doing the pitching now. So. Getting ahead of the batters, still 1 0 count, or 0 and 1 count. Fouled that one off right straight back to the screen. No balls, two strikes, two away. Look for that big sweeping curve. Drop third strike, it gets back. 
He's going to make it the first. King's going to be on at first, even though he struck out. So, And I'm not sure how you score that. I know it's still a strikeout. Yep. I suppose it's an E2 or a wild pitch. I don't know. It's just not an out. That's all nope. I know. Dory's up now and takes that first pitch for a ball. Ty's on down at first. The throw back to first. Ty was only off about a step. I think he'd already made up his mind he was throwing to first. I think so. There's a strike right there on the corner. He's got great control. He's able to hit that. Outside corner there, whatever he wants. That was low in the dirt. Two balls, one strike. Swing and a miss, strike two. Fouls it away to stay alive. Two, still two and two. Foul that one off right back here to the screen. Didn't get much of it. Way up on the handle. And there's the big sweeping curve again. Out number three. Three more strikeouts, and we go to the top of the sixth inning. It's 11 to 2 Arcola here on the Paris Sports Network. Family owned in Paris for 38 years, Savoia's Pizza is the place for real Italian food. Be sure to try their famous pizza nuggets and follow them on Facebook for their latest specials. Stop by 327 North Main Street for carryout or call 217-463-2500 for delivery. White Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning have been your hometown boys for over 50 years, offering 23 and a half hour service. That's right, they need a half hour for coffee. Call John at 217-465-3195. Country Financial representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student-athletes. Give them a call at 465-8320 or stop by their office at 802 North Main Street in Paris. Make plans to attend Lake Ridge Christian Church this Sunday, either for their traditional service at 8 a.m. or their contemporary service at 10.30 a.m. There's something for everyone at Lake Ridge, from infants to the more seasoned generation. Visit their website at lakeridgechurch.org or find them on Facebook to watch their service each Sunday morning at 1030. It's the top of the sixth inning. Tigers down 11 to two. And it'll be Braden Phillips stepping in to start things off. It's one of the faster games we've done this year, Lenny. It's I feel like everything we've done has been like a three-hour ball game, and we're an hour and a half in in the sixth inning. First pitch is down for a ball. There's a drive out into the gap that's going to get down. Extra that's, bases. Yep, that's all the way to the fence. I'm not sure he's stopping at second. He's nope. digging for third. Standing up. Standing up triple. Well, 
They're just hitting it where we're not. Yeah. I mean, They've been gapping it all day today. And this will bring up the other half of the Phillips duo. This will be Brody Phillips. Strike on the first pitch, 0-1. Strike two called on that curveball. This is outside. One ball, two strikes. Hot shot to third. They'll check the runner, throw to first in time for one. Here's the play at home. Off the mark, he's safe. Safe. I don't know what else you could have done, though. I mean, it would have took a perfect throw to get him. But. Yep. And he just got a triple. You know he can run. Comes in for the score, and it's 12 to 2. Bases are empty with one away. Hit him. Uh, yep, that plunked him. That's going to sting a little bit as Alonis runs down to first base after being plunked. At least it's not 35 degrees out. That is true. That helps a lot. <laughs> Last Saturday, that would have been hurting in clear into tomorrow. Stings a lot less at 70 than it does at 35. That is for sure. About twice as much. Left fielder number five, Lewis, steps in now with the runner on at first. And I got a quick 2-0 count. High and inside and tight, three, no. Ty's had some control issues he, the last he has. few pitches. Oh. Breaks off that slow breaking curveball, though. That well, looked good. You throw two or three pitches at a guy's head, that curveball <laughs> will make you duck. <laughs> it does, yeah. And he walks him. Yep. So he hit the last batter and walked this batter. That puts two on now. And still only one out. Brings up the right fielder, number two, Stevens. Shows bunt, puts it down, foul. That was a pretty high-pitched bunt there. No balls, one strike. Let's see if he's bunting again. Almost got hit. Dances out of the way. Bring the count to one and one. Shows bunt and pulls it back. Two and one. Three and one.
Ooh, got the call on the corner. Might have been a little generous there, I'm thinking. I think a little. Fills the count up, three balls, two strikes. Maybe. And he walked him. Base is loaded. And we're back at the top of the order. Yep. And this will bring up the pitcher, Thomas. All he's done today is singled, homered, grounded out to second, and doubled. Scored three times. Takes that one low in the dirt, gets all the way back to the fence. Another run scores. And it's 13 to 2. Both runners move up 90 feet. There's a strike. One and one count. Called strike two. Look out. Yeah, missed him. Everybody staying put. Two balls and two strikes. A lot of cars coming in. We must have a tennis match or something going on. Or at least tennis practice. That could be. Full count, three balls and two strikes. There is activity on the tennis courts. Swung and missed. And he's safe at home, or safe at first and safe, safe at home. Safe at home. And he's still running. He's going to second. Coach Tarr is going to come out for a moment here. Still just one out. And our call up now 14 to 2. It's gotten ugly here, it Lenny. It has. He actually had him struck out, but uh, the drop ball, and then Carter couldn't find it. And then when he did find it, I'm going to have another pitching change. Sebastian Doherty is going to go to the mound. So Tile slide over and play third. He's on like his fourth position today. At least third, anyway. Yep. Because he started out at second. And then I think he was out of the game for a little bit. And then he came in to pitch. And now he's at third. So, yep. Well, we'll take a quick break here, let Doherty throw some warm-up pitches, and be back in just a moment on the Paris Sports Network. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. 
Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. If you're looking for agricultural, business, or personal loans, Longview Bank & Trust has you covered. They can even help you with investment options and online banking. At locations in Paris, Crispin, Georgetown, and Marshall, they're always ready with the services you need. Look them up online at longviewbt.com. Welcome back. Here we are, top of the sixth inning. 14-2, to two, Sebastian Doherty has taken the mound for the Tigers. Throws his first pitch in there for a ball. This should be the number two hitter, third baseman Wiseman. Next pitch for a ball. Ooh. Swing and a miss at some high heat there. That's where he likes that pitch. They all look good up there, but the, you just can't do anything with it. Missed that one wide. And there's always that one kid in Little League, though, that can tomahawk them mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 300 feet, and they're a foot over their head. Check swing blocked by Carter over on the third base side, so everybody still stays put. The count goes full, 3-2. Runner at second and third with one away. And Walks him. Yeah, free pass. So that'll load him up. For their catcher, Griffith, he steps in, batting in the number three slot. Flew out to deep right field in the first, doubled in the second, singled in the fourth, singled in the fifth. He'll take a strike on the first pitch. 0-1 with the bases loaded. Uh -oh. Look out. Uh-oh. That one is crushed. Uh-huh. That landed in a classroom, I think. If they had the windows open, it might have been ground rule doubled into the classroom, it, I think. It's up by the school, that's Grand for sure. Grand slam. I don't think the wind aided that one. It didn't need any help. It was crushed. They got the gator going after that one. It's so far out that the kids are like, we're not chasing that one, Mom. <laughs> they had to send the gator all the way out there to go get that one. Well, that's a seventh spot this inning, so. Hey, the bases are empty. They are. Still only one out, though. We'll bring up their big first baseman, number 22, Helmuth. Chopper to third, fielded by King. Throw to first is high and gets down. Good job over there by Dunn. Dunn, yes. That'll make two outs. And Sean had to go up to that and really make sure he came down and got his foot back on the bag in time. This will bring up Braden Phillips, and he started all this mess back with the stand-up triple. That one comes in over the head a little bit, 1-0. Swing and a miss at that one. Even things up at one and one. Called strike right there on the corner. One ball, two strikes. Mm -hmm. 
There's a little blooper out in the right that's going to get down just barely over the second baseman's head. A hit nonetheless. It is a C&I single. With your right fielder playing way deep and the way the wind's blowing out to right. And it's going to carry it over your second baseman's head, but your outfielder's so far back, back, he's not going to get to it. No way. So this will bring up Brody Phillips. Takes it low for a ball. Outside, Outside and low for ball two. Check swing for a strike. Well, he thought about it, but then for whatever reason he held up, he should have just went ahead and committed. Chops that one foul down the first baseline. Good job over there by Dunn to make the play, about three feet foul. Low, three and two. Another blooper to right. And it gets down. Throw off the mark to third. Runners at the corners now with two away. Might expect our Cole to start throwing a couple subs in here real soon. This might be one. Number three. Mayhall. Yep, so number three. Mayhall. Mayhall. All right, we'll see what he can do. Runners at first and third. Still only one out. Takes a first pitch for a strike. No balls, two strikes. Another one through the hole. It does. It gets past Dunn at first. Actually, it was in the hole between first and second. I mean, nobody's going to get to that one. Another run scores. I've seen several games this year for the Tigers where I thought, man, our pitching was not good. We walking guys. We can't throw strikes. That hasn't necessarily been the case today. Not the, I mean, yeah. Yeah, we walked a couple, but our coal is just hitting the ball. And they're hitting it where we're not. That one chopped foul. This is left fielder number five, Lewis. Struck out his first two times up, grounded out the second his third time up, and then he did walk his fourth time up and scored. Foul tip, strike three. That'll end the inning, but uh, eight more on the board. Our call is up 19. To two. We'll be back in a moment on the Paris Sports Network. The Paris Sports Network would like to give a big thank you to our affiliate sponsors for their support of Paris Tiger Athletics. 
the Mary Lou Pine family, Paul and Kathy Porter, Mark and Holly at Winans Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, and Steve and Lynn Young. Farm Credit Illinois is a proud supporter of the Paris Tigers athletes and the surrounding farm families. Farm Credit blocks appraisal costs and lender fees and defends our borrowing members with free repricings as the market allows. Farm Credit helps farmers score with annual cash patronage. Team up with a cooperative helping farm families succeed and let us help lead your agricultural business to victory. Best of luck, Tigers, this sporting season. Cornerstone Building Brands is the largest manufacturer of exterior building products in North America, servicing commercial, residential, and repair and remodel markets. They're the number one manufacturer of vinyl siding, windows, and metal accessories, as well as North America's top choice in metal roofing and wall systems. With an expansive product offering and more than 100 locations, they're committed to providing high quality exterior building solutions that their customers and communities can count on. That's Cornerstone Building Brands in Paris. Bottom of the sixth inning, Tigers trailing 19 to two. We got a new pitcher on the mound. We decided that was uh, Brody Phillips. Uh, I think that's what we de deciphered out. Yeah, number 15, Brody Phillips. He went from shortstop to the mound. Misses on that one, 101 count. Designated here, Ethan Curl stepping in. That one skips low in the dirt away. So, chop foul. Two balls, two strikes. Protects the zone there, fouls that one away. Pops it up center field. Going way back. The wind caught him there at the last second. Mm, but he still made the catch, though, just before he got to the track, so that's just a deep fly. One down, brings up Sean Dunn. Sean's got only one of a couple Tiger hits on the day. Fouls that one off himself. Yeah, Sean's got the the one single, and Eastham's got the one double. That's it for us today. Check swing there. Takes it low in dirt, gets past the catcher. Two balls and a strike, one out. Still a lot of room out there between right and center. Sean could kind of pull one out that way. Here's a 3-1. Walked him. He does walk. That's 
two walks today for Sean. He's reached base three times today. Two, two walks, walks and a and single. A yep, two walks and a single, and he scored a run. Here comes Eastham. He's got our only two RBIs today. Takes a healthy cut at that one and comes up empty. And he got a. He was way ahead of that one. He's still on the the old pitcher speed. And taking a second to readjust here. Chops it to third. Long throw to first for out number one. Dunn makes it safely down to second. That'll be two outs, though. Nathan Trapp steps in. Nathan struck out his only two times up today. Takes that one low in the dirt for a ball. Tigers down to their last out. Hard shot to short, field to dough, and got him. That is the ball game. The 10 run rule kicks in after five. And the Tigers fall by 17, so there was some cushion there. And we'll take a break and come back with some post-game stats for you. Here in just a moment, you're watching Paris Tiger Baseball on the Paris Sports Network. With two convenient locations in Paris and Kansas, Templeton Funeral Home is always there providing the care and service you and your loved ones deserve. Pete, Mark, and the staff at Templeton Funeral Home would like to wish all the Tigers the best of luck this season. Go Tigers! North American Lighting is a leading supplier of automotive lighting systems in North America, and they're proud supporters of Paris Tiger Athletics. They'd like to wish all the Tigers the best of luck this sporting season. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home is dedicated to providing compassionate and individual attention to every family they serve. Sincerely caring for your family's needs. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home proudly supports Paris Tiger Athletics. Moody Farms of Paris is a proud supporter of Paris Tiger student athletes. Whether they're on the court, in the field, or in the classroom, Moody Farms wants to wish all of our Tigers the best of luck this year. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. Welcome back to the post-game show here on the Paris Sports Network. Again, the final score are Cola 19, Paris 2. Lenny, this is normally where I say, hey, what do the stats look like? But there's not a <laughs> lot of them to add up not, today. Not, to, not on our side for sure, and I don't keep their – I mean, I keep the book, but I don't keep their hits and all that. Not too much to say, though, for the Tigers. Ty King led things off. He went 0 for 3. Sebastian Doherty, 0 for 3. Ethan Curl was 0 for 2, one hit by a pitch and scored a run. Sean Dunn had a single, two walks, scored a run. I suppose Carter Easton would be our bright spot. He was one for three with a double and two bar RBIs, and then everybody else is 0 for. Nathan Trapp went 0 for three. Kip Bradford 0 for one. Maddox Hutchings came in to pinch hit for him. He was 0 for one. 
Parker Sanders went 0 for 2, and Drew Rogers went 0 for 2. So. How about that pitching performance, though, from Thomas? He, oh, was, man. Li he was lights out. He was, wasn't he? I didn't – well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen strikeouts. And five innings. Yeah. There's only fifteen outs in five innings. <laughs> He's struck. He had 14, 14 strikeouts. 14 strikeouts in five innings. Well, he actually struck that one guy out, though, and, and the catcher and still dropped reached. the ball and still reached base. So, actually, he struck out. 14. But a, yeah, so he got an extra one there. That yeah. One. And then he came in, the relief pitcher came in in the sixth, and still he didn't strike anybody out, but we still didn't put anybody on or come across. So, so he goes five innings. He strikes out 14. 14. He gives up. One walk, two hits. Yep. Two runs. Two walks. Two, two walks, walks, a single, and a double. Wow. And two runs. So, pretty performance today for him. So. Pretty impressive for sure. So, Coach Tarr is still out talking to the boys. Yeah. So, he usually comes up and chats with us after the game. What's our schedule look like, Lenny? Well, let me dig that out of the box, and we'll see what we're doing next week. I think the weather's supposed to start finally getting decent. See what we got here for the boys next week, starting on the 2nd. So they're off Monday. Yep, Tuesday the 2nd, Martinsville. Well, that says canceled, though, so I don't know if it's canceled or not. Oh. Yeah, down here, we're, we're looks like we must be playing Schlarman. Okay, so Schlarman Tuesday. Yeah, and it looks like it's a 6.15 start time for wow. for whatever reason. Maybe they was going to play a doubleheader that day, and we was going to play Martinsville first, and then that could be. Schlarman. Well, they had to cancel the first game. They realized we wouldn't be done by 6.15. Could 7 be. 7.15, maybe. And then Thursday, the boys are away at Danville. Saturday, they're away at Oak Hall Valley with New Berlin. Okay, so just one home game for the boys next week. Next week. So we'll see what the girls' schedule looks like. Monday, they're away. That's a JV-only game. Tuesday, Martinsville's at home. So and then they're away the rest of the week after that. They're away the rest of the week. Wednesday, so. Friday, Saturday. So I guess that being the case, maybe we'll just leave the equipment here. It's already set up, so we'll do the boys on Tuesday against, I'm assuming, Slarman yep. at 6.15. The girls will be home behind us, but that will be our only broadcast. And next week will be on Tuesday. Looks that way to me, and unless we tear the equipment down, go over and do the girls first and then – move it back over here, but I don't see the point in doing that. I don't know. We'll see what Jeffy says. And the boys are done with their meeting. Coach Tar ought to be up here in just a moment. We can ask him about that uh, start time for the Danville game. Looks like he's still talking to somebody down there at the end of the dugout. That he is. He may be a little slow getting up here today. So we may go ahead and wrap things up and uh, chat with Coach Tar the next chance we get. I want to thank everybody for making the broadcast possible today. And, of course, all of our fans for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and tell all your friends and family they can tune in and watch Paris Tiger Sports here on the Paris Sports Network. Have a wonderful Easter, everyone. You've been listening to Paris Tiger Sports on the Paris Sports Network. Brought to you by Cornerstone Building Brands, Stuart and Carroll Funeral Home, Seed Solutions with Chip and Bethany Keys, Longview Bank and Trust, Moody Farms, State Farm Agent Terry Elliston, Illini FS, Savoya's Pizza, Edgar County Community Foundation, Country Financial Agents Jim Blue and Mark Gladding, Lake Ridge Christian Church, Ingram's Waste Disposal, 
The Skating Rink with CJ and Mary Jo Becker. North American Lighting, First Farmers Bank and Trust, Templeton Funeral Home, and White Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning. And our affiliate sponsors, Steve and Lynn Young, Mary Lou Pine Family, Paul and Kathy Porter, Winans Farms, Mark and Holly Winans, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, and Step Farms and Excavation.